Hey, what's going on guys? It's Andrew with Train Monkey Blade Co. I've got an awesome little blade for your next subscription box. This is based off of a Puko. This is my idea, my version of a Puko. Of course, it kind of has my flair to it, my style to it, but nonetheless, this follows the guidelines of a Puko, which means it has more handle than blade, typically a quarter more handle than blade. It's flared out at the butt end of the blade and it's tapered to a point. So this is gonna be your next little build. It's gonna be awesome. Now, what we're gonna do with this build, um, the grind's gonna be slightly different than what you've uh, maybe have tried or experienced. And everybody's heard of a chisel grind and everybody's heard of a hollow grind, but we're actually gonna do a modified hollow chisel grind. And so I have this blade for reference. You can see on this blade, it has a nice deep hollow grind on it. But on this side, it's completely flush. So although it's only ground on one side, like a traditional Japanese chisel grind, we're actually gonna implement the hollow grind so we could actually get a little bit thinner blade profile on this Puko. So that's what we're gonna do with this guy. So what I've found out doing modified chisel grinds is the easiest way to grind it, here it is set up in my jig, is I will actually take this edge, my ground edge, all the way to the back side, almost zero ground, flush to my fresh edge, the edge I will never even touch, I will never even grind. I'll establish that no matter how steep it is. After that's established, then I'll actually take my jig and I'll back the angle off and I'll back it off and I'll back it off until I essentially establish a plunge line where I want my final resting point. If you're doing it freehand ground, which typically I'll do all these freehand ground, it's extremely easy. Just grind once, and then you're good. So here I have my fresh ground Puko blade. I started with 36 grit and ended with 320 and you could see nice fresh grind on that side, zero grind on that side. And you could also see how my plunge has a nice soft shoulder. And I get asked a lot, how do I get a soft shoulder on some of my grinds? And it's really simple. So here I have my contact wheel. If you want a hard grind, you keep the sandpaper right on the edge of the wheel. If you want a soft grind, all you do, move it out. The farther out you have your sandpaper, the softer the grind. The closer in, the more crisp, harder the grind. So now that we have our fresh ground blade, I'm gonna show you how I heat treat and I'll, I also put my maker's mark. Uh, the steps are really similar. This is ADCR V2. So we need a minimum crunch time, five minutes at critical temperature, and then after that, we'll be good to go. So here I have my little maker's mark kit. I get it up to a nice red hot temperature. I just make sure it's where I need to do it. I give it one good hit. Now I'll put in my maker's mark. Now I have to put it back in the fire, and I bring it up to critical temperature one more time. Now that I brought it up to critical temperature, one more time, I actually put it on my cold anvil and I press down. I let the anvil soak the heat, take it away. And what this does is it refines my grain structure. It makes my grain structure much smaller. In turn, my blade will be much stronger and it'll actually hold a, a sharp ridge for longer. So I wait till it turns all the way black. I get all that nice heat out of it. So now that I've taking the heat out with the cold anvil. I put it one more time back in my forge. I bring it up back to critical temperature. And then my quench oil is just canola oil. You can use parts 50-50. You can use any fast quench medium. I get it a nice, even orange temperature. And in one good motion, right in the quench oil. Constantly moving the blade in the quench oil. Pull it out, you'll have a nice hard blade. Hey guys, so here I have my heat treated and tempered blade. So I tempered it at 350 degrees for two hours and I did that twice. So after I tempered, I have these nice micarta scales that the folks at Waterjet Knives actually cut out for me. So that's an option as well. And all I have them is clamped right onto my handle. And now we're gonna use Gosol bolts from Maker Material Supply. You can see they're just a nice little machine piece of hardware. 
and they come in two pieces. So the shaft has to be drilled out at 1164. So I have 1164 bit to drill it out. And then the head has to be countersunk a quarter inch. Now when I countersink, I use a brad point bit. That way my countersink is always centered with my initial hole for the shaft. So here I have my handle attached with the hardware. Now I'm just using some spare hardware because uh, inevitably when you shake your handles, you're gonna nick your hardware for final shaping. So I just use spare old hardware to attach the scales to the blade. I'm gonna be using a mix of the flat platen and that's to square up the body of the blade on all sides. And then I'm gonna be using my small wheel holder to do some vertical texturing. Um, and that's pretty simple. If, you, if your grinder can't go horizontal, such like this, because I'm gonna be doing this motion with it, um, then you could actually just do it with hand files. But I'll be using my small wheel holder and my flat platen. I'm gonna do 36 grit and 80 grit, and that is it, because I wanna leave this micarta nice and textured. So here it is, fresh off the belt grinder, both my flat platen and my uh, small wheel. And you can see I've just squared it up and tapered it on my flat platen and then I have taken it to the small wheel and all I do is I rock it back and forth, back and forth. And that gives me that nice texturing which brings out that uh, awesome pattern on this micarta. So my next step is I am just gonna put it into my tumbler, which is right here. And it's full of 80 grit ceramic media. I'm gonna tumble this blade and all for about three and a half hours. Then I'm gonna pull it out, I'm gonna dry it off, put a little oil on it, and then I will show you the next steps after tumbling. All right guys, there it is, that's the finished blade. So all I did is I tumbled it with my ceramic media for close to four hours. It makes it nice and smooth. After that, all I did was apply one single coat of Cerakote. Now I didn't show you how to do the Cerakote because that's a whole different beast but I'm gonna do some videos for the guys at Waterjet about doing some Cerakote and then they could put it in their library. So, tumbled, nice and smooth finish, single layer of Cerakote, beautiful micarta scales, and that's your Puko. Thanks a lot, guys.